Hey guys, welcome to my channel after quite a long break. Uh, if you are new here, this channel is all about Australia, about living in Australia, studying, working. So if you are thinking of migrating, this is a perfect place for you because we are talking about different visas, cost of living, um, and lots of general information about I know different places. We have as well a section called travel vlog. So if if maybe you're already here and want to see around, want to wander a little bit um, around, just check that uh, vlog section as well. But today, today we're going to be talking about soul and what is soul and why it's important and why so many people uh, completely miss it and don't even look at a soul and why um, it's crucial for you to know how to read it and how to check it and how to check your occupation on Sol. So, let's get started. It's a skilled occupation list, which means that it's a list of occupations that are currently in demand in Australia, uh, which means that if you are thinking of migrating, it's really good, it's really important that your occupation is actually on the list. If your occupation is not here, well, then probably you need to think about a different path uh, to Australia. But now, how we can read a soul occupation list and where we can find it. So first of all, let's jump to the computer. We need to uh, go to the government website and we can find skilled occupation list on imihomeaffairs.com.au um, or we can just simply Google and we can type it skilled occupation list Australia. It's very important that you jump to the government website, not to any random website because then they might have an old list that are not, um, you know, they're not going to be a current occupation list. And once we are on the website, you can see that there is a skilled occupation list. On the top, there's a list of different visas. So you can search your occupation under certain visa. But assuming that you are just coming to Australia, you may not know which visa you can uh, be eligible for. So let's just scroll down and here. Here we have a section called skilled occupation list when we can search your occupation by name or by visa as well but again if you don't know yet what kind of visa you can apply for then just search by name and before we gonna jump uh, to see an example let's see how that skilled occupation list look like and how to read it in the first column you can see an occupation so here you can find the name of your occupation. It goes out uh, alphabetically, so that's pretty easy then. Um, however, be aware that your occupation may have slightly different name in your country and in Australia. So probably it's good to do a small research before because perhaps the occupation in, um, in your country has one name and here it might be slightly different. But anyway, first column is your occupation name. Second column is an ANSCO code. So ANSCO code is a really important code. Basically every single occupation in Australia has its own um, ANSCO code. Doesn't matter if you're on the list or not, you're always gonna have your ANSCO code. Um, we're gonna get to the code a little bit um, later. Next column says visas. And this is really important because it's uh, showing you what kind of visas you can be eligible for if uh, you know you have that certain occupation. Okay, and the next column is called list. And you may think like, oh, come on, but my occupation is already on soul list. So what kind of list is that one? And yes, your occupation might be on this general skilled occupation list. However, um, this general skilled occupation list has for other groups, for other lists, uh, because all the occupations are, that are in demand now in Australia 
uh, they don't have the same importance, I would say. So some occupations are uh, perhaps in demand in certain regions, um, perhaps some occupations are in demand but only for the short term, not for the long term. That's why we have that fourth column uh, with the name of the list. And this is really important to check because the fact that your job is on sole, it doesn't really mean that your job is actually, um, you know, um, really in high demand. And now how we read that um, fourth column. We have four types of groups, four lists. And the first one uh, is ROL, so it's a regional occupation list, which means that those jobs are in demand in regional Australia, which is still good because, you know, you can go to regional. Regional Australia doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be very, you know, deep in the outback, somewhere in the desert. We live on the Gold Coast and Gold Coast as well is considered regional. So, um, you know, it, it doesn't need to be end of the world. Next one, it's a ST soul. ST soul means short term skilled occupation list, which means that yes, your occupation is in demand, but only for the short term, which means that you can come here, but probably you're going to get the visa for only a few years. Perhaps there's not going to be an opportunity for you to, um, to extend that visa or to get permanent residency. The next list is called MLTSSL, which is a medium and long-term strategic skilled list, which means that your occupation is actually in demand for the long term, which is great because if you are on that list, that gives you an opportunity uh, to perhaps later on apply for sponsorship or for permanent residency or uh, different types of visas. Um, so this is, this is a really good list. If you are on, on that one, perfect. And then the last one, it's called PM Soul. So it's a Priority Migration Skilled Occupation List. And this is a list um, of occupations that are really highly in demand um, in the current situation. So for example, if something is happening uh, in a country, um, like now we have COVID-19, uh, then all the jobs uh, that are related to and they can help recovery from COVID-19, they might be on this priority migration list. So, uh, so this is a really good list as well. So this fourth column basically tells you uh, specifically on what kind of list your um, occupation is, because the fact that uh, you are in just a general pool it's, it's great, it's a first step, but still you need to check if you are on the regional, if you are on the short term, long term or priority. I think, um, personally, I think the medium and long term and priority list are the best, obviously. Um, still, if your occupation is on the short or regional, uh, you know, it's worth trying because perhaps next year it's going to be, um, a, you know, the situation changed. This is also very important because uh, that list, soul list, um, it's being updated basically, I think at least once per year, which means that now your occupation is on the list, perhaps next year it's going to disappear. Or now your occupation is not on the list, but maybe next year, yeah, oh, fantastic, your, 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 your job is on the list. It's really important to, to check that website um, from time to time, actually. Um, just to double check if your occupation is still there. And perhaps, you know, it's going to jump from the short term to the long. Um, you never know. So this is our fourth column list. Really important. Next one and the last one is assessing authority. This assessing authority uh, will be doing your skilled assessment, which means that um, they will check if you actually have the skills uh, to do the job. They might check as well if you have, uh, mm, you know, specific certificates or, I don't know, permissions, licenses, whatever it's needed for your job. There's so many jobs, we're not going to go into that 
um, to read because obviously every single occupation has a different process but you need to be aware that yes there is an organization that's going to be doing your skilled assessment okay and now let's see uh, an example and let's um, see what is that ANSCO code about so in a skilled occupation list we need to type whatever occupation you have for example let's say carpenter carpenter and we can see here that the carpenter has this specific number uh, visas that um, you may be eligible for we can see as well that carpenter is on the medium to long term uh, visa so this is perfect and assessing authority is uh, TRA now when we click this ask a code um, we're gonna jump to the statistic bureau and this uh, website is actually gonna show us all the details about this profession so we can see what kind of certificates are required and skills to be eligible um, for a visa under the carpentry occupation so this is really really helpful because it can give you an idea you know um, what you can expect on that skilled assessment okay so this is it so skilled occupation list i hope this video was helpful and now you know how to read all the tables and how to find the information that may help you to either choose your visa or choose your future uh, course if you are thinking of studying and if you are thinking of studying this is a really perfect uh, first step for you uh, to look for your courses and in the next video i will tell you what kind of courses are available for you and how to search for a perfect program and um, what do you need to be looking for and what do you need to check before actually applying there's a few uh, tricky things about uh, choosing a course in Australia so I will tell you how to choose a course that actually gonna take you somewhere so thank you for today I hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoy um, you know thumbs up uh, subscribe share with your friends uh, share with your family with everyone and um, I'm going to save my laundry because it's rainy again uh, anyhow I hope you have a better weather, whatever you are. Uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions and uh, well, see you next time. Bye.